Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at the evaporator of a chiller. Just want to add, if you have not already looked at the other videos we've made on the series of chillers, I highly recommend you go back and start watching these just to build up that base knowledge of the chilled water system and the chillers to understand fully how they work before moving on to this section. Anyway, so the evaporator. The evaporator is this cylinder here and it's located just after the expansion valve and just before the suction line which goes into the compressor. By now you should also know that the evaporator collects all the unwanted heat within the building and uh, this is where all the chilled water is produced. So it sends off that chilled water around the building, this goes into the AHUs, collects all that unwanted heat from the buildings, uh, from the building and the floors, that then gets sent back to the evaporator where that heat is given up and sent by the refrigerant over through the compressor into the condenser. One thing you're going to notice about the evaporator is this, this black foam that's covered all over the evaporator and the, the connections to and around it. This is the insulation. And this is really important to have this on the evaporator. And that's because all the chilled water, all that cold water, is produced here in the evaporator. And that chilled water is actually really expensive to produce. And what you want is to ensure that all the chilled water that is produced in here, all the money you spend on this machine producing this chilled water, all that water gets sent out around the building to collect all the unwanted heat and bring that back so that the, uh, the evaporator can pick up that heat and get rid of it. If you don't have insulation on the evaporator, then you're going to pick up unwanted heat within this plant room. Uh, coming from the machines and the motors for that. You don't want any of that. You can use fresh air to get rid of rid of this. You know, certain circumstances maybe you can't, but um, you don't want to pick up any additional heat on the way. So you want to make sure that uh, all the chilled water pipe work is insulated and also that the evaporator is also heavily insulated as well. If your chiller does not have the evaporator insulated, I highly recommend you bring this up with your, your manager or whoever uh, and get this as a project to have that insulated. Now typically, like I said, it's this kind of foam type insulation that's covering um, the evaporator and the shell and the connections around there. That's going to be you know, a vinyl nitrate polymer type insulation um, and it, it'll be around 19 millimeters thick, you know, three quarters of an inch, something like this. If you speak to your, the manufacturer of your chiller, they'll almost certainly be able to provide you with a pre-made, pre-cut set um, to cover all of this and it should with all your new chillers it should come with standard. Now the evaporator is made up of this this shell here that sits obviously around the outside and there are also these tubes which sit uh, inside the shell and they run the length of the the evaporator from one end to another. Now looking at the tubes which run uh, inside the shell it's important to remember that the uh, the water there sits on the inside of the tubes. Just mark that up there. But the refrigerant sits on the outside of the tubes. The, the, two, the refrigerant and the water never mix. They're always separated by the wall of this tube that runs along. They're completely isolated from one another. So what's happening here is you've got the tube sitting there running along the length um, of the evaporator, like I said, the water sits on the inside, and the refrigerant, which I've you know I've just given it this green murky color here, um, that sits on along the outside, and then all the heat that's within the water is given up to the refrigerant, so it just transfers that heat through the pipe wall, through the tube wall, and out into the refrigerant. And the, uh, the refrigerant picks up that heat and it boils. So it comes in as a liquid through the bottom of the chiller, through the bottom of the evaporator. Uh, it picks up that heat and it boils off, you know, and it evaporates and heads off towards uh, the suction line and into the compressor. So we know that the refrigerant enters through the bottom of the evaporator as a liquid. It boils off because of the temperature of the water in here and the low evaporation temperature uh, or boiling point of the refrigerant 
and all that refrigerant as it's uh, now a, a, a gas form, gaseous form, uh, that leaves through the suction line and into the compressor. The chilled water, however, um, comes in at, at, you know around six, uh, 12 degrees Celsius, flows through the evaporator, and then leaves at the other end, um, or back through the same end, but we'll look at that in more detail shortly, um, at around 12 degrees Celsius. Now to keep the refrigerant inside the shell and make sure it's you know, held in there and doesn't leak, we're gonna need to seal the evaporator shell. So at each end of the evaporator, we fit these um, metal plates uh, and that's welded to the shell to ensure uh, it's completely sealed in there. The plate is obviously drilled to allow these uh, tubes to be fitted on the, uh, through them to run along the length of them. Um, but these are usually not welded, the tubes are not welded um, to the, uh, the metal plate here. But what happens is they'll fit a tool inside here. The tubes will be inserted fairly loosely. Uh, the tool will fit inside uh, the pipework. And then this expands the pipe diameter um, and creates a perfect seal between the tube, um, which is usually you know, a copper material, and the carbon steel uh, end plate. And I'll just show you what uh, a real evaporator looks like. So you can see you've got the tubes here, you've got this the area uh, inside where there is no, no tubes and no, no piercings through this wall, and that is to allow for the refrigerant uh, vapor to build up there and collect uh, before going off uh, into the suction line. By the way, these plugs which you can see here um, these are just being these have been put here just because the tubes have actually burst, um, so they need to be sealed off so that the machine can continue to operate. So the, you just put these plugs in. Um, you got to shut the machine down, obviously, and you put these in, and that just seals off the tube to allow the machine to go back to working without replacing the tubes and doing um, some quite expensive additional work. Just looking at a bit of a close up um, of the evaporator and how the tubes are actually sealed here. So you can see that the tubes are not welded to the steel plate. And what's happened is they've been expanded. Uh, really the, the, the metal wall here has been compressed or crushed against this uh, metal wall so tightly that it forms an almost perfect seal. And then the end caps are then pushed and rounded over uh, to obviously seal the end there and stop that from moving back and forward. Now to keep the water inside the evaporator um, and to channel it around, we use these things here which are placed on either end of the evaporator and these are known as water boxes. Now there's some slightly different versions of water boxes. Um, this one has got obviously two openings so this would allow chilled water to enter and then leave and there's this metal plate in between the two which is known as a baffle and this separates the, t the flow of the two, you know, the entering and leaving uh, chilled water to ensure there's no mixing of the, the water temperature um, and keep them separated. And that's much like you can see here where we've got uh, an inlet, the water flows in and then it flows out and exits through this secondary. Alternatively, you may have uh, a plate like this which does not have the baffle in between. And so this just simply channels the water and the water will uh, hit out of one end, sorry, it will hit this turn 180 degrees and then flow back into uh, some more tubes. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that. So evaporators are often referred to as the number of passes which they have. What does this mean? Well, if an evaporator is said to have had one pass, that means that the chilled water simply enters one side, flows all the way through the tubes and into the water box on the other end and then leaves at the other end. Much like you can see with this chiller, there is only one pipe, quite a large one, and it is entering one end and then leaving the other. That is a one pass evaporator. Alternatively, you could have a two pass evaporator and that's where the chilled water enters it's, uh, into this water box. The baffle stops it spreading to the other half. The water then passes through the tubes into the end baffle uh, which does not, uh, the end water box, which does not have a baffle, so the water just carries on and flows through it, continues out to the other side of the original water box, and that then leaves uh, to go off around the building. 
that's what's happening on this chiller here. You can see the evaporator. Uh, there is no pipes leaving the end, there are, but there are two pipes on this end, which means it is a two-pass evaporator. And the final one is a three-pass evaporator, and that is where uh, the chilled water enters into the water box here. The baffle prevents it traveling all the way through. It gets channeled through these tubes into the water box at the other end with another baffle that channels it through these tubes into this water box, the original one. Um, there's no air flat to go, there's no exit, so it is channeled once again off back to the final, the secondary water box, and the baffle there ch uh, channels that out. It's important to remember if you are looking at uh, a evaporator and you're not sure if it is a one or a free pass system well the pipes will not be aligned so you can see that it's not a straight pass through so it indicates that it is a free pass but as always don't really make assumptions on things check with the manufacturers uh, there should be a serial number stamped onto the chiller you can have a look at this on the manufacturers website to find out how that evaporator works and the dimensions etc you can see the plate here uh, the manufacturer's stamp will be on there, the name and also the model number. Um, just have a look at this. Alternatively, alternatively, there should be some documents stored on site to tell you uh, all the manufacturer's literature for all the machines which are there. Have a look there also. Now just on the materials of the chiller, of the evaporator, um, the shell and the water boxes and the end plate, they'll all usually be made from uh, carbon steel and they'll be built um, to a certain standard depending on which country you're in uh, to withhold a certain amount of pressure. Now these are built, um, they generally get a, a giant sheet of carbon steel and they roll this around into um, a sphere, into a pipe shape and then they weld along the seam. The tubes on the other hand are generally made from a copper, copper alloy. Um, sometimes they're made from maybe like stainless steel and that all depends on what the you know the uh, the water is on the other side, and is it going to really corrode, etc. So certain materials for certain um, applications, and it really depends on the application for which chiller um, you can use. I highly recommend you speak to any manufacturer before you install this, um, and also to, obviously to your specialists. Now some of you may have noticed these things on the side of the evaporator. These are sight glasses, so these allow you, these are made of glass here, and these allow the user to look inside the evaporator, and you can see the refrigerant as well as the tubes. Let's have a look inside. Now looking inside the sight glass, you can see the tubes here running along the length of the evaporator, and you'll notice that these tubes are not smooth, they've got these weird ridges all the way along them. Uh, now, there's a really important reason for them, and that is that these fins increase the surface area of the tube. That means that more heat can transfer out of the, uh, out of the chilled water and into the refrigerant. This means that the chiller is more efficient. It means the evaporator and the, the, the chiller in general is much smaller, so the price would go down. And also, the fact that space in the building is at a premium. So the less space you can take up um, through HVAC equipment and electrical equipment, the more space in the building you can use to rent out to other companies or you can fit um, process equipment, etc. I'll quickly show you how efficient the, the fins are when they're placed on the tubes. So if we imagine this is the chilled water passing through and this is the the wall here of the, of the tubes. Now the surface area is just the length along here and that's where the heat will transfer out into the refrigerant. Now with no fins the heat transfer like I said is just going to occur there. But if we place fins along the length of this, uh, the tube then the surface area increases dramatically and this allows much greater heat dissipation and heat transfer out of the chilled water and into the refrigerant. You may have also noticed these uh, pipes coming out the top here, they look a bit like this one here. Uh, these are just relief valves, so uh, these valves which are here, they are spring loaded and if the pressure increased too high within the evaporator um, from the refrigerant, 
these spring-loaded valves would open and allow the gas to vent out and get passed through these pipes out and unfortunately vent into the atmosphere. Um, and then once the pressure is dropped back to an acceptable level, the springs inside will just automatically close and continue to seal that in. Okay, everyone, that's the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if this has helped you, then please like and share the video. And don't forget to subscribe. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we've got to check out the website, etc. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And don't forget to check out our other videos. Thanks very much.